Hey guys, it's Phil from SmilingGardener.com and I'm sitting here in front of the veggie garden and today I'm going to be talking about mycorrhizal inoculant. And I'm sitting real close here because uh, as you'll see in a minute the inoculant is very small and uh, I want to show you exactly how it works. So mycorrhizal fungi are a special, are, are kind of a special kind of fungi that form a relationship with plants. A symbiotic relationship where they help each other out. And actually over 95% of plants form this relationship with fungi. And what happens is the fungi, they effectively, what they do is they, they attach to the root system of the plants uh, and even go right inside the roots and then they effectively extend that root system of the plant because the fungi can go much further out into the soil uh, and get water and nutrients, nitrogen, especially phosphorus and some of the heavier, um, some of the nutrients that the roots have a hard time getting out of the soil. And uh, in return for that favor, the plants will give a lot of carbohydrates or sugars and vitamins and enzymes and all kinds of living substances, food, to the fungi. Uh, so it's this exchange that occurs and plants will give over 50% of the carbohydrates that they make to the fungi and to other microorganisms uh, that do things for them in the soil. So, um, you know, mycorrhizal fungi, they're another of these microbes that I talk about that we should have in our soil. I mean, they're fairly ubiquitous in nature. But in our soil, they're often not there because we, if we've been tilling, uh, if our soil is compacted, if we, if we haven't allowed a lot of organic matter to be recycled in there, you know, if we're using pesticides, chemical fertilizers, if we've been withholding water from the landscape, like if we're using drip irrigation, um, all kinds of human activities, um, you know, can drastically decrease the health and abundance of mycorrhizal fungi in our soil. And so it's a good idea to bring it back in. Um, there are a couple different kinds. There's, the main kind is called endomycorrhizal fungi, uh, it's, or it's also called uh, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. And it's over 90% over of species of plants form relationship with this kind of fungi. So um, that's going to be your, most of your vegetables and your grasses and a lot of trees are going to form that relationship. There's also another one called ectomycorrhizal fungi. Um, the endo actually goes right inside, not only inside the plant roots, but inside the cells of the plant. Whereas the ecto doesn't go inside the cells, or that's what I, that's what I remember about it. Uh, the ecto is about maybe 5% maybe of plants. Um, quite a few coniferous trees, evergreen trees, and some deciduous trees as well. So what I often like to do is, um, if I'm going to be seeding like a, a big lawn area, I might just go for the endo. But if I'm going to be seeding a lawn and vegetables and trees, I'll, I'll pay the extra... Uh, when I sold this stuff, it was about an extra 10% for an endo-ecto blend. Uh, so that's what I usually recommend you go with. Um, and you can get that, um, you know, from like the Organic Gardener's Pantry, which I used to run. That's just in Canada. Uh, in the US, I actually found a good brand on uh, Amazon. You know, it's starting to become a bigger thing now. It's been around for a while, but it's starting to become more well-known. So you should be able to find it in a garden center too. Um, so when you want to apply it, you know, the ideal time to have this stuff applied is in the nursery when they grow it, but that's often not happening, um, usually not happening. It's, it's starting to happen a little more, but generally we're going to have to do it ourselves. And the best time to do that is when you, uh, when you plant, because uh, you want this to form, you want this to get in contact with the roots of the plant. Um, and so the best time to do that is when you actually have access to the roots. So I'm going to show you today just how I would do it with seeds, because seeds need it too. Um, just to keep the video short, I'm not going to show all the different ways you can do it, but once I get that Smiling Gardener Academy up and running, um, I'll show you how to apply it to plants, uh, you know, uh, plants and also into the existing garden. Uh, today, so I have some beans. Um, beans are just one of the many kinds of vegetables that are going to form the relationship. And actually, almost you know, many vegetables do. Uh, there are some that don't, and what I'll do is I'll put a list down below. Uh, or if you're not on my blog, I'll put a link down below. You can head over to the blog, and then I'll show you the vegetables that you don't need to apply the fungi with. So here are some beans. Uh, I picked a bean just because it's big enough to, for me to show you. And here is some mycorrhizal fungi powder. I have it in a powder form. I always tend to, I, I just sold the powder form because it goes through a sprayer as well, and sometimes it's useful to put it through a sprayer. Um, but you can also get it in more of a granule. I like the powder and then it's really, it's helpful because a powder you can uh, rub right onto the plant roots or rub onto the seeds. So all I would do is if I would, 
follow the instructions for how much you need to use. It depends on which kind you buy. But um, I would take my, all my seeds and I would just have them in a jar or something and I would just rub them onto the fungi. All you need is a little bit of fungi to get on there. And I doubt you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. That's coated. I mean, that's plenty. All you need is a little bit. Um, another thing that I would do though is I tend to soak my seeds overnight before I plant them. Not so much bean seeds, legumes. Uh, I've learned that you don't really want to soak them for too long, but most seeds I do soak them in a mixture of kelp and water and usually sea minerals. I'll talk about that another time. But here are some that I, I just soaked and then I put that in there. Oh, like it really sticks really nicely. So uh, usually I'm, I'm putting my mycorrhizal fungi onto something that's been soaked. Um, I don't have a, I don't have a plant to show you today because it's the middle of summer and that's the other reason I'm not going to show you how to plant it. But if I did, if I had say a little basil or something, I would take it out of its pot and I would just rub um, like half a teaspoon of this stuff onto the roots. I don't have to cover the whole roots, just as long as it gets on a little bit of the root. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of spores, um, you know, in a, in a pound of this, of this stuff. So like I'm going to have thousands of, or hundreds of th or thousands of spores here and just rub that on the root and you're good to go. Um, I think that's all I want to talk about today. There's, I kind of, I know I'm going to get a lot more into this in the academy when I can, when I have more time, but, uh, I think that's good for now. So um, if you want to, uh, if you want to see which vegetables uh, you don't need to use this with, you can go check that out on the blog. While you're there, you can sign up for my 15 vital lessons for becoming a better organic gardener, uh, which are these just 15 really lessons that I thought were really cool when I was first learning about organic gardening. So I give those away to you for free. You can get those right on the main page. Um, and that's all for now about mycorrhizal inoculant. So I'll see you next week.